Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a great day. I'm gonna to talk to you about SSS today, or subsurface scattering. So this is gonna be a two-part tutorial. First one, I'm going to show you how to set this up in Cinema 4D, and in the second one, I'll show you how to do it in Octane. So we're gonna be cheating a little bit. It's not gonna be the actual SSS in Cinema 4D. We're gonna do a little bit of a hack um, that renders a lot faster. And this is only available in R18. It's using the new Ambient Occlusion Invert. It's a brand new feature in R18. Um, but subsurface scattering, if you look at this image, it's basically the thinner parts, usually towards the edges of the model, are going to have a lot lighter of a color, and the insides of the model where it's a little more dense, they're going to have a darker color. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D, and we'll delete this material off here and make a new one. Start from scratch. So here's a new material. And the first thing we're going to do is add a base color. So we'll just do a nice blue color here for our base color. Something like that. And then we're going to add a reflectance as well. We're going to delete the default specular. We're going to add a Beckman. And let's add a Fresnel, a dielectric one. And let's just tone this down a little bit. So let's actually turn off color and reflectance and we'll turn on luminance. So if we go to texture twirl down and we go to effects, we have ambient occlusion. All right, so let's apply this to our dragon here and we'll hit render. And you can see that we already have ambient occlusion. Now this is a great way to add ambient occlusion to a single model or object, but we're gonna dive into the options here and we have this new feature called invert direction. So you can see right now inside of the mouth where it's kind of a shadow, a crevice, it makes it very dark. If we invert this, we're gonna get a totally different look. And um, inside the mouth, it's kind of dark there, and on the edges, we're getting black. So we're going to hack this luminance to make a fake subsurface scattering. And we're going to do that with this color ramp. We'll go ahead and add um, maybe a light blue over here. So this will be the light color towards the edges. And then we'll take this one and make this that kind of base color, a darker blue, something like that. And let's render and check this out. All right, so you can sort of see a little bit of a hint on the edges of this darker color. So that means we definitely need to move our slider over this way. And then we need to play with our minimum and our maximum ray length. So I can already tell you that maximum is gonna spread out the rays too far. So we're gonna drop that down maybe to 40 and we'll just see what that looks like. So now we're starting to get that sort of fake um, SSS look. Uh, we're going to have to kind of play around with these settings a little bit. Maybe drop this one to 30 on the maximum ray length. And we're starting to get something right here. So maybe we'll kick up the minimum ray length and the maximum. So we'll try 5 and 40, see what that does. And there we go. It's a little bit softer. So now that we have this sort of dialed in, we can turn on our base color and our reflectance. And we'll see what that looks like with the addition of those two channels. So one thing that will help a little bit is to make this a bit more waxy by going to the reflectance and we'll go to the roughness and turn that up a little bit. And let's crank the actual overall reflection up as well. Just give it a really rough reflection so it gets a bit more waxy. So that is the new ambient occlusion invert direction. And then just play around with these color sliders. That's gonna have a dramatic impact on this as will the maximum ray length and minimum ray length. So just dial that in depending on your scene scale, and you'll have a really fast rendering subsurface scattering in Cinema 4D. So in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to do this in Octane. It'll be a really short tutorial because it's just a couple of clicks, and you get a really nice result. It's a little bit more finicky in uh, Cinema 4D. It takes a little bit more messing around with, but the result is really cool. So I hope you learned something. Thanks, as always, for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.